Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. I am Pastor Bridget Ogbefo, inviting you to join me every Friday at 6 a.m. on the Tobago Inspirational Network for Gateway to Life, where we explore the Word of God through the help of the Spirit of God. I bring greetings in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the reason for the season. It's a lovely Christmas morning, and I want to say Merry Christmas to everybody watching. This is Gateway to Life, and I am Bridget Ogbefon, and I'm so grateful that God has spared you and I to be able to see this season again, to be able to enjoy this time of the year. So many people were here with us last year who are not here. It's not as if we are rejoicing over their demise, we just want to give God God thanks for his mercy, for his compassion over us, and we are so grateful. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, O God, for this beautiful day, the one that you have made, I will rejoice in and be glad. We thank you, O God, even as people all over the world celebrate your birth this morning. Lord, we say be exalted in the name of Jesus. So many people have controversies on what day Christ was born, if you were born on today or any other day, but Lord, I know that you were born, and you came to this earth to save mankind and for that reason we celebrate you today we give you all the praise irrespective of whatever date men may have put on it or not we give you all the thanks we thank you for the work you came to do on that cross of Calvary. and we glorify your holy name in jesus mighty name i pray father in the mighty name of jesus i pray oh god even as your word it's about to come for this morning. Lord Jesus, I pray that you will touch the hearts of men, women, boys and girls, young and old that may be listening and you will interpret your word in a unique way to their hearts even on this beautiful morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you Lord for you have heard for our prayer in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Again, you are welcome to Gateway to Life. And this morning, we shall be looking at the topic, The King is Born. The King is Born. Hallelujah. And we are taking our text from the book of Matthew chapter 1. And I want to take it from verse 18. Look at what the Bible says. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 18. It says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with a child of the Holy Ghost. Willing, hallelujah. It says, before then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, Hallelujah. While he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Look at from verse 21. It says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which will be which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph being raised from sleep did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. This king we are talking about that is born is Jesus himself. This king we are talking about is the Messiah himself. This king that we are talking about is the savior of the universe himself. And the Bible describes that Jesus was a product of the Holy Ghost. Jesus came into this world sinless and blameless. Jesus came into this world without spots or wrinkle. Jesus came into this world without any form of contamination. 
He was born on a beautiful morning. Like I said, while I was praying, it doesn't matter what date of the year Jesus was born. But the convincing truth is that Jesus was born. He came and he came to save man. And he did that perfectly well. The king is born so that you and I can reign forever. The king is born so that you and I can no longer be condemned to sin. The king is born so that you and I can have eternal life. The king is born so that you and I can fellowship with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Jesus' birth was a miraculous one that was different from that of the ordinary man. He came sinless so that he could save a sinful world. Hallelujah. He did not inherit the sinful nature of man. Jesus Christ came into this world sinless because God knew that after the breakdown in the Garden of Eden, when man disobeyed God and there was that separation and there was that gap and there was that gulf, God knew that he needed somebody else who did not have that blood of disobedience, who did not have that blood, you know, of sin. To take away the sins of the world. And so he sent Jesus into the world. Let's look at what the Bible says in Romans. We are looking at the fact that a king is born. Why is the king born? To save you and I. To restore us. To bring us back from the place of condemnation. To bridge the gap. Look at what the Bible says in Romans chapter 5. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 5. We are looking at verse 17 and verse 18. R Romans Chapter 5, verse 17 and to 18. It says, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, that is Jesus Christ. Therefore, if by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. If by the offense of Adam, condemnation came upon all men, more so, by the obedience of Christ, we have inherited righteousness. We have been made righteous. We have been cleansed from, from, from sin. We have been brought from the way of condemnation and our feet planted planted on the righteous path hallelujah no wonder the bible says hallelujah let's see what the bible says in 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 in, in first peter 2 9 hallelujah we are talking about what the king came to do for us what jesus christ came to do for us look at what the bible says first peter 2 9 it says but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and a holy nation a peculiar people that he should show for the praises of him that have called you out of darkness out of condemnation out of sin into his marvelous life you are a royal priesthood because the king was born because Jesus came we were given that lineage of royalty we were given that privilege to be addressed as a royal priesthood because we are connected to that king that is born hallelujah Jesus was born in order to make us righteous. That is what we just read in Romans chapter 5, 17 and 18. Jesus was born in order to make us righteous. Hallelujah. Jesus' coming in human form made him to identify with all our human experiences in the flesh. Jesus chose to come in human form. If you, read, if, you, if you look at where we read today, if you look at where we read in, in, in Matthew chapter 1, 18 to 25, the Bible made us to understand there was no union between Joseph and Mary. The Bible says they were espoused to be married. They were engaged to be married. So Joseph had no form of intimacy with Mary when, he, when she, she conceived Jesus. So there was no seed of a man, you know, deposited to bring Jesus into being. The Bible says he was conceived of the Holy Ghost. But yet he came in human flesh. So that he would be able to complete that work of salvation. So that there would be no excuse. Because if Jesus Christ had just dropped from the sky. Right now we would have been saying, oh Jesus you expect us to do so and so. Because you don't, you, 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 you don't have flesh and blood. 
You don't know what we carry. You don't know that we have this carnal flesh. You cannot experience what we experience. You cannot tell me to abstain from this and that because you never, you were not in my shoes. You don't know what I feel. So he chose to come in human bodily, you know, in bodily form to complete the work of salvation because he wants to go through what you and I go through. He wants to feel the pain that we feel. He wants to understand how things that make us feel pleasure, he wants to know it. He wants to know the things that hurt us, the things that make us, you know, sad and happy. He wanted to have a taste of all of this. And so the Bible says that Jesus came in human form in order to identify with us. Hallelujah. Look at what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4. Hallelujah. Look at what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4. Jesus came because he wanted to identify with us. He wanted the work of salvation, of taking you and I out of condemnation. He wanted to do a perfect work. He wanted to do a complete work. And so he was born just as you and I were born. Look at what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 and verse 16. It says, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need you understand that jesus came so that we will not have any excuse not to embrace the work that he came to do this king that was born came with a mission he came with a heart to take you to his kingdom. He came with that heart to take you and I to his domain. He wants us to reign with him in the kingdom. That while he is the king of kings, we will be those royal priesthood. Hallelujah. So Jesus understands. He understands our weakness. He knows our struggles. He knows the things that you are fighting up with. He knows the things that are hard for you to resist. He knows what you go through. Hallelujah. We should be always full of thanks that Jesus came to save us. It's something that we can also give God thanks for. That Jesus decided to leave his throne and came on this earth to save us. Just think for a minute, if Jesus was not born, if this king was not born, what would have happened to you and I? What would have happened to us today? If this king was not born, if this son was not given, if this child was not born, where would you be today? If salvation were to be bought with money, how many of us would have been able to afford to buy salvation? I leave that to you as a food for thought today. Jesus came to this world to reveal God to humanity. That is one of the major duties that this king was born for. To reveal God to humanity. Let's look at what the Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse 18. He came to show men the pathway. He came to show men the pathway to God. Hallelujah. Look at what the Bible says in John hallelujah in the book of john chapter 1 and verse 18 let's see why the king was born it says no man had seen god at any time the only begotten son which is in the bosom of the father he had declared him he had revealed him he had made him known so that's what jesus christ has come to do to reveal god to humanity to remove the veils from our eyes no more that no wonder the bible says when he died the, the veil in the temple tore into two from top to bottom he came to reveal god to us my question today to you is, are you beholding the face of God? Are you looking towards the direction that Jesus is pointing? Are you looking up unto him on the cross? Are you accepting the birth of Jesus? Or are you just busy celebrating a stranger you don't know? This is the period of the time, Christmas season, is when people do a lot of celebration. Some even celebrate the king of kings and the savior of the earth by drinking themselves to stupor. Drinking alcohol to the extent that they lose themselves. 
But in all of that, in all of that celebration, do you know who you are celebrating? Do you have a, celeb a, a, a relationship with the person you are celebrating? If I am having my birthday party, for example, and I have catered for a number of people, you would be specially invited for that birthday party. There will be no room for gate crashers. There will be no room for strangers just walking on the road and say, oh, I love people having a party here and I want to come around. There will be no room for just any and anybody, specially invited guests only will be admitted into that, that gathering. It will be strange for me to hear that some strangers I don't know, I don't have a relationship, who don't even know me, who don't even know how I was born, who know nothing about me. I, it will be strange for me to hear that they are celebrating my birthday. Are you celebrating Christ without having a relationship with him? Do you know who Christ is? The Bible made us to understand that God, he, 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 God, Jesus Christ, like us, like every other man, he was born and he was tempted in every way, yet he was without sin. Why? Because he came to taste what you would have tasted of, to walk in the way that you are walking now, to live on the earth that you are living now, so that you will have no excuse. So that you will not be able to say, well, I, 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 I can't serve him because, you know, I'm a human being. Jesus Christ stayed on this earth. It may have been a short sojourn, but he stayed on this earth in human flesh and blood. And the Bible says he was tempted in every way, yet without sin. You see, after the fall of man in the Garden of Eden, the close relationship with God was broken and so in order to correct this god sent jesus christ to break the gap that is in a nutshell what i'm saying jesus christ came with a purpose it's not as if it's over all hope is not lost we say okay i cannot relate with god salvation is not for somebody like me but jesus came to make the work easy he came to break the gap we can now access the father through jesus christ we can now go before his throne of grace because Jesus was born. Hallelujah. Let's look at what the Bible says in 1 Timothy 2 and verse 5. Hallelujah. 1 Timothy 2 and verse 5. We are looking at what the Bible says. Jesus Christ came to bridge the gap between us and God so that we can, able, we can be able to access him. We are not left to, to condemnation. Jesus Christ came to bridge that, that, gap, and that, that gap, and that's why he was born. Look at what the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5. It says, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. That is one of the reasons why Jesus Christ was born. To become that mediator between man and God. To become that gap, that bridge that will give us easy access to God. How many of us would have been able to pay for our sins with our own blood? How many of us would have been able to go to the cross, to be nailed? Just for our own sins to be cleansed. How many of us would have wanted to be born the way Jesus was? He who was the king of kings, the savior of the whole world, the messiah of the entire universe. Who was born in a manger, who was born in such, you know, a, a, a shameful manner. How many of us would be willing to go through that? But Jesus Christ went through that shame. He went through that embarrassment. He went through all of that so that you and I will know no shame. So that you and I will live a life that is uh, embarrassment free. So that you and I will be able to live a better life. But as, as all of this that Jesus may have for us in his heart. As good as intentions and his thoughts for us may be. You still have to be willing to go through the bridge that Jesus Christ has created. You still have to be willing to connect to God through Jesus himself. 
my question to you this morning this afternoon this night whatever time are you willing to embrace the birth of the king the birth of the king talks about salvation the birth of the king talks about uniting us back to God are you willing to embrace the birth of this king are you willing to be united to your God the main reason why Jesus was born is to save mankind. So my question to you today, are you saved? Have you accepted this salvation? Have you decided to follow Jesus saying no to all others? Have you decided to come closer to him to say, Lord Jesus, it's not just about celebrating Christmas. I want to know who is behind Christmas. I want to know the reason for the season. I want to have an embrace with the Savior himself. I want to have a taste of what you have in store for me. I want to embrace this God. I want to be your child. Are you willing to accept the love of this Christ? Let's look at what the Bible says in John chapter 3 and verse 17. Talking about the fact that one of the, the main reasons Jesus Christ came is to save mankind. Is to take you out of your sin, out of that pit of condemnation. Look at what the Bible says in the book of John chapter 3 and verse 17. It says, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The ultimate reason why Jesus came, why this king was born, is so that you will be saved. It's so that you will not be condemned. It's so that you will not be gained by the devil. It's so that you will not be put into internal damnation. The Bible says that he came into this world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Are you willing to be saved? Jesus Christ is stretching forth his hands to you. Are you willing to take his hand? He's knocking on the door of your heart. Are you willing to open? It's not about celebrating Jesus. It's not about celebrating Christmas when you do not have a relationship with him. Look at verse 18. The Bible says that he that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Do you believe in the name of Jesus? Do you believe in the name of this king that was born? Or are you just celebrating who you don't know? Look at verse 19. It says, and this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. You have placed before you light and darkness. Do you want to walk in light? Everything is made clear in the path of light. Darkness cannot stand where light exists. Darkness cannot be in control when light appears. Do you want to embrace the light of God or you want to continue to group in darkness? Darkness is a place of destruction. Darkness is a place where you do not even see, know your right from your left. Darkness is a place where the devil and his cohorts operate. Are you willing to come out of that darkness and to embrace this light? Look at what he says in verse 20. He says, for everyone that doeth evil hated the light. Neither come to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. I have come like a voice of one shouting, crying in the wilderness today. Have you embraced him that you celebrate today? Do you know Jesus? Do you know Christ that is the reason for this season? We are in that time of the year when the year is wrapping up. We have just a few days to go and today you are celebrating. I'm sure a lot of us, you know, you have chosen to celebrate in the manner you want to celebrate. Oh, it's Christmas Day, all kinds of rum, all kinds of things. But I'm saying to you, in the process of doing all of this, are you willing to embrace the light? 
And look at what verse 21 says. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. The light is there for you. And I advise you today, choose light. You can never go amiss in light. You can never fail in light. The truth will be made bare before you when you come to the light. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. There is liberty in light. There is upliftment in this light we are talking about. There is promotion in this light we are talking about. So the king is born. Who is this king we are talking about? Hallelujah. Let's quickly see what the Bible says in Psalm 24. We are trying to establish who is this king? Who is this king? We want to talk about who is this king that is born today? Look at what the Bible says in Psalm 24 and verse 7. It says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle lift up your heads O ye gates he will lift them up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is this king of glory the lord of us he is the king of glory jesus is the king of glory and that same king is the one that is born today have you had an encounter with this jesus have you embraced him have you accepted his love the bible made us to understand romans 9 9 and 10 it says that if you believe with your heart the lord jesus it says and if you confess with your mouth it says that you shall be saved it saved it says for with the heart man believeth and with the mouth confession is made made unto salvation are you willing to embrace this king that is born the bible made us to know that he is the king of glory that he is the lord of hosts that he is the mighty one 2020 may not have been a very uh, uh, pleasant year for a lot of people but there is hope 2021 is fast, fast approaching do you want to go into the new year without embracing this light I sure know you don't want to do that because you need him to see you through. You need him to show you his path. You need him to help you even into the new year. Just like 2020 came upon us, nobody knew all of the things that happened would have happened. This God, this King of glory I'm talking about, knows what 2021 holds. And my advice to you today is that you embrace him. Do not just celebrate him. Do not just celebrate because it's Christmas. Celebrate because he has come to liberate your soul from, from condemnation. And as you do that, he will continue to lift you from glory to glory. Hallelujah. Until I come back next time, shalom. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. I am Pastor Bridget Ogbefo, inviting you to join me every Friday at 6 a.m. on the Tobago Inspirational Network for Gateway to Life, where we explore the Word of God through the help of the Spirit of God.